There are at least three third-party taxi booking apps in Singapore, and one more is expected to be launched by the end of the month. The boom in companies offering third-party taxi booking apps has led to calls for more regulation as the impact of such apps on the public transportation system grows. Transport observers say setting quality of service standards for these companies could be the way forward. Taxi operators already face such QoS standards. But these may need to be adjusted to take into account improvements in the industry driven by the third-party apps. In this week's Spotlight, Saiful Bari Ismail examines how such technology is changing urban travel and creating new mobility in Singapore. Taxis are a popular mode of transport in densely populated Singapore. A total of six taxi companies operate nearly 28,000 taxis, making about 1 million passenger trips every day. And new players are speeding into the market with the aim of helping passengers get a taxi when they need one. These technology companies do not own any taxis, but they're changing the way taxis are being used. Grab Taxi from Malaysia launched its taxi app service in Singapore in October 2013. Easy Taxi from Brazil started theirs in December last year. Uber, a San Francisco-based company, began operations for their taxi app service last month. And the newest kit on the block, Halo from the UK, is expected to begin operations this month. The Land Transport Authority monitors the safety and service performance of taxi operators. This is done through the Quality of Service Standards or QoS and one of the measurements focuses on taxi bookings. Taxi companies have to ensure 95% of calls are answered by the taxi dispatch system. The dispatch system also has to answer calls within 20 seconds and confirm a taxi within 5 minutes. Calls must be successfully matched with taxis at least 92% of the time. And passengers should not have to wait longer than 10 minutes for their taxis to arrive. Such third-party taxi booking app companies are currently not regulated. But this could change as the LTA continues to review the impact these companies have on the industry. If we see that third-party app become a mainstream support service, huh, then the, the way that they complement taxi operator should be taken into account when we compute taxi operator QoS on call booking. Uh, it definitely needs to be tweaked in order to recognize that taxi operator now have other means and other ways to reach consumers. However, the National Taxi Association also believes any regulation should be calibrated so as not to make it too hard for app companies to operate. Uber Technology said it's prepared for the challenge. In a recent conversation that we had with the Singapore regulator, their concern was that a customer service inquiry uh, had a response time of less than 48 hours. Uh, and we nodded respectfully and listened and we said, well, our standard and our expectation for ourselves is less than one hour. So, you know, we're 48 times better than the standard and we're always going to be better than any standard that's set uh, by any organization. But we're happy if the organization set those standards because we know that we can exceed them. Commuters have welcomed the arrival of more taxi booking apps to help them get cabs quicker. But having too many choices can be a problem. Taxi drivers complain that passengers use many apps to book a cab at one go, then cancel the bookings once the first taxi arrives. A lot of commuters are very impatient, which I can understand fully why they, are, why they need a taxi. But they, I hope they will understand that taxi drivers are not Harry Potters. We don't fly around with a broomstick. There are traffic conditions to be taken in, in due. If I am in a desperate need, I call, I try to book all of them at the same time. But of course there's a reason for this. The reason is, most of the times I have the reply, there's no tax available. So if I do one by one, it's, it's impossible. So I do five at the same time, but once I have this first answer, I cancel the others, of course. 
It's a weekday afternoon and this Hawker Centre at Bukit Mira View is a favourite hangout for many taxi drivers to rest and have lunch. The sales team from various taxi booking app companies are also out in force trying to rope in drivers. Cabbies are attracted by incentives that these companies offer and some have seen their income go up. Increase uh, 30%. Uh, because now we all see uh, which uh, company uh, give more incentive. We all concentrate that one. Now it's a competition. Uh. So if uh, incentive uh, less one, uh, we all off. Stay away off. Offline. Currently, Uber pays drivers $5 for every trip they complete and the passengers get a 25% discount of the metered fare. Grab Taxi is offering drivers $100 worth of cash, credits and giveaways. Halo is believed to be giving drivers $10 per trip as they test their service before the official launch. Easy Taxi offers drivers $50 for 25 trips, $150 for 50 trips and $300 for 100 trips per week. Easy Taxi operates in 35 countries and has received 77 million US dollars of funding from various e-commerce venture capitalists. This taxi app company adjusts its incentives every week. We have a certain budget allocation to see I mean, how much are we willing to invest to acquire a driver and how much are we willing to invest to acquire a customer. So each week we look at the data of the performance of the previous week, what the incentive of the previous week was working. So we make a decision then, make adjustments to incentives. Obviously, uh, taxi booking applications are not charitable institutions, right? They're not in this to give you discounted taxi rides. Their market model is that they want to capture as large a share of the market as possible and then use the market power to try to get you to pay for the service. So in the long run, uh, basically, they're going to stop offering discounts. They're going to start monetizing the service in some way. With such a market model comes the question of sustainability. At least one industry expert believes Singapore may not be able to accommodate all the taxi app players. I do not really think we have that kind of uh, market size or the market potential for all the service providers to sustain their service in the longer term. So which means I do not exclude the possibility that uh, either in the long term or in the medium term, some of the service provider, smartphone service provider, may choose to exit the service. Singapore is embracing the efficiency these third-party taxi booking apps bring as it embarks on its goal of becoming a smart nation with the kind of technology and capability we have on our hands. Queuing up for a taxi may soon be a thing of the past.